Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and I have something very special for you today. It's actually an older pattern that was originally published in my book, Cable Crochet Made Easy. This is the book that has the complete video tutorials included with the written patterns. Um, and the pattern I'm about to show you is also available as a PDF download should you just want the single pattern and not the book. I just want to make that clear at the beginning. But let me show you um, first of all, what we have here. I'm going to show you a few examples of this particular shawl or scarf. This is made using nurturing fibers, um, lace weight wool, and this is made with one hank of that. Now, one thing that's fun about this pattern is you can use any yarn that you wish and I'm going to show you a couple of examples. All you need to do is upsize your hook. You can make this as large or as small as you wish simply by limiting the number of repeats of the established pattern. Okay, that's one example. Here's another example and this is using um, kind of a rayon tinsel blend of yarn. It's, it's kind of nice for the summery months since it's um, it kind of has a lot of properties that cotton would have. So I just want to show you, this is another example of what you can do with the very same pattern. And I've really enjoyed experimenting with other fabrics as well, other fibers. This is made using 100% baby alpaca. Gives it a very, just a very different feel, a very different texture. And here's an even another example. You can tell I like this pattern and I've, I've made many um, different examples. I didn't add the finishing edging to this one, but this is 100% mohair. And I think this is actually one of my favorites. It's almost like crocheting with cotton candy. Such a delight. It's just that when you're working with fibers such as this, you have to be sure that you understand the stitches beforehand because you don't want to try to rip out very highly fuzzy yarn like this. Well, for today's demonstration, I even changed it up a little bit more and I used two different colors of sock weight or fingering weight yarn. I'm going to share that to you in just a minute. And I'm just to show you what you can do and how you can switch this up with your designs. So it's one of these patterns where you are in charge, you are the designer, you make it as big or as small as you like and have fun picking colors. Just make sure that you upsize or downsize the hook to match your yarn. Well, let me go ahead and show you what I used and how to make this particular design. For this project, I'm going to be using two yarns that I've had in my stash. Both of these are hand dyed. Now you don't have to use the exact size yarn that I'm using, but I just wanted to show you what I'm using um, so that people will know. And the first of which is Emma's yarn. This is again hand dyed, 100% super washed merino wool. Uh, this hank has 438 yards or 100 grams and this colorway is called 80s Rewind. And the solid colored uh, yarn here is Bliss by Lydia Yarn. I don't know that these are available any longer, but um, if you have any other kind of um, weight yarn like this, it should be fine. This is Super Wash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon and I have approximately 400 yards of this yarn. So we're going to combine these two. I will also add that you can make these um, scarves or shawls in a one color, solid color, or you can use uh, multiple colors. So I'm going to be using just two for this demonstration and we'll be changing colors every so often. But if again, if you're using solid color, you just, just disregard the color changes. I also recommend that you have a crochet hook size G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter. That is if you're going to be working with this type of yarn. If you're going to be using a thicker yarn, of course, you're going to need to upsize your hook. And as always, I recommend that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. So let's begin. I'm going to begin with a slip knot. And please notice that I'm using the colorful yarn that changes uh, 
colors throughout for the beginning of this and for what is mostly the double crochet sections of this particular project. After my slip knot, I'm going to chain four and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch to form a small, a small ring. I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and then working into the center, if you can see that the center of the ring made with the four chains, I'm going to work nine double crochets. And I do this by working right into the center. And you'll also notice that I am crocheting on top of the extra strand as I go. And that will just help me to have one less strand to hide as I finish this project. After completing row one, you should have nine double crochets plus the turning chain, and the turning chain does count as a stitch in this written pattern. So go ahead and count that. So that would make 10 double crochets. Again, nine double crochets plus the turning chain equals 10. So we're going to turn. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to work a double crochet in that very first stitch, and this counts as an increase. And then one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. That's one, two, and three. And in the next stitch, we're going to work a corner. And the way we work our corners is going to be the same throughout this project. And that is worked in the same stitch. We're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and then work two more double crochets worked in that very same stitch. Let me pause and show you what that looks like. So you see two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in that same stitch. And now we work a double crochet in each stitch remaining. So that's one, two, three, and four. And as we come to the last stitch, we're going to work two double crochets. I'm just going to work them in that chain three space. You can work them in the top of the chain three if you wish. It's however you'd like to do it. And this is what you have at the end. And yes, the number of stitches is going to be one more on this side than the other. I, I understand that. Um, but what's going to happen as we go forward is we're going to be adding um, two stitches at the end of our rows and the turning chains, and we're going to be adding one at the beginning of the rows. Of course, the beginning and end of the rows are going to um, switch from side to side as, as we um, work each row, and thereby adding increases here, here, and also in the turning or, or in the corner where we add the two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. We'll also be increasing there and this is how the shawl grows. So we're going to go ahead and turn and for row three, chain three, double crochet in that first stitch. Again, this constitutes another increase. And then we're going to work one double crochet in each stitch until we get to the chain two corner. Just a couple more stitches here. Okay, so now we've come to the corner or the chain two space and we do another corner or uh, two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets. And then we double crochet in each stitch until we get to that turning chain. And then we'll be adding two stitches there. Let me go ahead and, and get to that point. I am going a little on the fast side. I apologize, but um, if you need to know some of the basic stitches, like the double crochet, you can check out my channel and I'll put a link in the video description below for these stitches. Okay, so I've worked two double crochets in that turning chain 
and this is what you should have so far. Now for row four, it's basically a repeat of what we've done on row number three and in row number two. We're going to chain three, double crochet in that first stitch, and in each stitch until we get to the chain two corner space. And again, once we get to the chain two corner, we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets right there in that same chain two space. And then double crochet in each stitch until you get to the turning chain. Now once we get to the turning chain, we're going to work two double crochets. I'm going to work the first one. And then with the second one, we have a color change. So we work half of that double crochet. And now I'm going to bring in the new yarn before completing that last stitch. Just like that. And now we're ready to, I'm going to chain three before I turn. But before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and take care of this color change. I'm going to put the hook down. I'm going to clip the color changing yarn right there. And I'm going to tie a very loose knot with these color changes. I'm not going to tie it real tight right now until I decide what I'm going to do and I'll show you how to deal with this towards the end. Okay, I'm just going to tie that really loosely there. Okay, so now that we've turned, we're ready to begin a new stitch and we have a new color. So this, this is going to be the arrow stitch. This is starting with row number five. We're going to work a double crochet in that first stitch. Now to begin the arrow stitch, I'm going to double wrap the hook for a treble crochet. We're going to skip three stitches. One, two, three, and then that fourth stitch, we're going to work a treble crochet. Now working behind that stitch, that treble crochet, we're going to double crochet in each of the stitches that we skipped. It's one, two, and three. We're going to do that two more times. Skip the next three stitches that we haven't used. One, two, three, and in that next stitch, treble crochet. Working behind that treble crochet, double crochet in those three stitches that we just skipped. There we go. And we're going to do that again. One, two, three, skip stitches and that next stitch. We're going to work a treble crochet. Working behind that treble, we're going to double crochet in each of those three stitches that we skipped. Okay, now we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. And we come to a corner. Again, we know what to do. We just continue with the two double crochets. Chain two. And then two more double crochets. Now we want to make sure that both sides are symmetrical. So we had one double crochet here before the chain to uh, the uh, four stitch corner here. And so let's go ahead and put a double crochet there. And then we return to our arrow stitch. One, two, three skipped stitches. Treble crochet in that next stitch. Working behind the treble crochet we're going to double crochet in each of those stitches that were skipped. Skip three, one, two, three, and treble crochet in the next stitch, working behind them, double crochet in those three stitches that we just skipped. 
Okay, this next one might be a little bit tricky. Skip three stitches and working in the turning chain, we're going to work a treble crochet, working behind that treble crochet, go ahead and work double crochets in each of those skipped stitches, and then a double crochet in that turning chain once again. And since we've already worked the treble crochet there, we've gotten our two stitches out of that turning chain. So this is what you should have. Now we're going to work row two of the arrow stitch and then this will actually look like an arrow stitch. Chain three, double crochet in that first stitch, and then working the arrow stitch, skip the next three stitches, treble crochet in the next stitch, which should also be where that last treble crochet was worked. Now working in front of the treble crochet, we're going to double crochet in each of those skipped stitches. One, two, and three. And we're going to do that all the way across. Skip the next three stitches, treble crochet in that next stitch, working in front of the treble crochet, double crochet in each of those skipped stitches. Make sure you go through both of the top loops as you work those double crochets. Skip three. Treble crochet in that next stitch, which is also a treble crochet from the last row. And then double crochet as you work in front of that treble crochet. Alright, so now we just work these next three stitches as just straight double crochets. And then we come to a corner and that's where you work your two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. And to make this symmetrical to the other side. And let me just pause here for a minute because as you work this stitch in um, other rows that are going to be coming down the pike here, um, you're going to have many more arrows on each side, obviously. And let me go ahead and, and take a look. And you can see how the arrows are forming here. They're so pretty. Um, I love this stitch so much. I, and, and yes, you're going to have holes here. That's just part of the open work and the nature of this particular stitch. But as we work this further on into the project, you're going to have different numbers here on these extra stitches. So don't worry about that if that number varies a bit as you get to this part. Just make sure that the number that you have on this side matches the number that you have on the other side in the front, since this is the part that's probably going to be seen the most. Okay, so now we're just going to double crochet in those three stitches that are just double crochets. And now we return back to working the arrow stitch, which where you skip three stitches, treble crochet in that next stitch, and work double crochets in each of the stitches that you just skipped. So go ahead and continue working this, and I'll meet you at the end of the row. We come to that last double crochet and work a double crochet there and then work two double crochets in that chain three turning chain. Let's turn see what we have. You can see how beautiful this texture is going to be especially against this multicolor. I think I kind of like that. All right so now we're ready to change our yarn color. So what I'm going to do I'm going to back out the hook from one of these stitches. So this again is the last stitch, the second stitch that was crocheted into the turning chain. And I'm going to go back 
to the solid color, which is right here. I'm sorry, this is the, the color changing yarn that we're changing to. So I'm going to chain three. And before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and trim this yarn. Let's see, which yarn do I want to trim? Okay, yeah, I'm trimming the colored, the uh, solid color yarn. And I'm going to put a new slot. Okay, make a loose knot. There we go. And we're going to turn. And now what we are going to do is we are going to repeat row number three a total of four times. And that is where we work the double crochet in that first stitch and then each stitch across until we get to the chain two corner. Once we get to the chain two corner, we work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in this spot, and then double crochet all the way, one double crochet in each stitch, and then when we get to the chain three, we're gonna work two double crochets there, and then turn, and then repeat again. So go ahead and repeat row three four more times. I'm about to complete the last stitch of row 10, but before I do, I'm going to go ahead and work a color change, and I'm going to go back to my solid color. And again, if, if you're not using more than one color, you don't have to worry about this. I'm going to go ahead and chain three, and then turn and show you what I have after completing 10 rows. And I'm going to go ahead and take care of this other yarn and secure it. I just, this just makes me feel better inside. I don't think that the <laughs> stitches are going to come out on their own, but you never know. So I just like to kind of secure it just in a, in a small way there. All right. So now we're ready to begin one of my favorite stitches called the Celtic weave. And if you need additional stitch support on that, again, please check the video description below. I'll have a playlist of videos that you can refer to should you have need. We're going to go ahead and work a double crochet in that first stitch. After working that first double crochet, we're going to begin working front post treble crochet. So I'm going to wrap my hook twice. I'm going to skip the next two stitches. One, two, and then we're going to front post treble the next two stitches. Working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped, these two. Make sure you don't work that stitch on the end, because we've already worked in that one. That's one. And two. And we're going to work that all the way to the corner. Skip the next two stitches front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. And we're going to just do that again. One more time, I'll show this to you. Skip the next two, front post treble, in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, just like that. So go ahead and work that. Uh, a total of seven times, I believe, for the first side of this scarf. So after having worked seven of these Celtic weave crosses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you should have about three stitches left until that chain two corner. So we're going to go ahead and work double crochets in those three stitches. Now, if you have 
more or fewer, it's okay. It, this is not going to, you know, it's not going to be a deal breaker for this particular project, but you should have three according to the stitch count of the pattern. And then we get to the chain two, and we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. Now in order to keep this symmetrical on both sides, we had worked three double crochets before the corner. So let's work three double crochets after the corner. One, two, three, and then we're going to continue on with our Celtic weave. Skip two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches working in front of those last two stitches. We're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. And we're just going to continue that across this side. Skip two and then front post treble in the next two stitches, etc. So go ahead and work this until you get to the end of the row. I'm going to make a slight adjustment here since we have three stitches left and I want to go ahead and complete a Celtic weave over the last three stitches. So I'm going to work two front post treble over the same stitch to try to make this work out better for you. Okay, and we're working two, working in front of those last two stitches. We're going to work front post treble in those two stitches that we skipped. And we get to the turning chain, we work two stitches, two double crochets. Okay, so now we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And we're going to turn and we're going to work double crochets in that first stitch and in that next double crochet. And so now we're going to work, which is essentially row two of the Celtic weave and it's very important when you work this that you start with a back post treble crochet over the first two stitches of this weave. It's, it's a little different because we start it this way. Okay. So after working those two back post trebles we're going to skip the next two stitches and the next two stitches, which are right here, we're going to work back post treble crochets over these. Now working in front of these as seen from the front side, which means the stitches will be this way, we're going to come around through the back and we're going to work, if I can show you this, we're going to work back post treble over these two stitches that we skipped. just like that. And we're going to do that across. Skip the next two stitches and the two stitches here. And these are going to be two stitches that are on top, that crossed on top during that last row. And we work back post treble crochets over those. And now working in front of these stitches as seen from the front side, let me show you, we're going to actually work this stitch and then the stitch beside it. So I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like with the back side facing. This is just a slightly different angle than I usually film this, but I hope this is helpful. Let me try that again since the stitches got away from me. All right, so I'm gonna do that again because I know this is tricky. Skip the next two stitches here and then the next two that we're going to back post treble around are these two. And working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side so that we work this stitch 
next. And then this stitch. And I'll show you the stitches that we just worked were this stitch and this stitch. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work that across. I'm going to work this last cross with you because this is part of the Celtic weave, but these two stitches are not. But we're going to pull them in to the Celtic weave because we're going to be growing this section anyway as we go. So we work those two back post trebles over those two stitches. And then back post treble crochet over those two stitches we skipped. And then we're going to double crochet in the three remaining stitches. One, two, three. And then we get to the chain two corner and go ahead and work those two double crochets, chain two and two more double crochets. And then as you get to the next side of the scarf or shawl, go ahead and work three double crochets. I do believe that there is an error in the written pattern in the original book, so it may have said two stitches. It, it really is not that important, really. What we're going to essentially be doing is filling in the extra stitches here with double crochets, like I've said before. But in case it says two and you had three stitches, by all means, crochet double crochets in those three stitches. And then now we're going to begin the Celtic weave here. We're going to skip these two stitches, back post treble, and those next two stitches. And working in front of these two stitches, we're going to back post treble around those two stitches. We're starting to include this into the Celtic weave since we're going to be growing this section in the Celtic weave as the stitches are added with the next couple of rounds or, or rows rather. Okay, so I'm going to just continue working this Celtic weave from the back side all the way and I'll show you the turning chain. At the end of this row, we're going to work the next two stitches are going to be back post trebles. This is without skipping any stitches. And then we're going to work a double crochet in that next double crochet. And then two more double crochets in the turning chain. Okay, let's turn and see what we have. So you can see a lot of nice, lovely texture being added in. And I really like the way this color stands out against the multicolor. All right. Now we're ready to chain three. One, two, three. And we're going to work another round of Celtic weave. And so after that chain three, as we begin row 13, we're going to work a double crochet in that first stitch. And in the next two stitches, one, two, and then now we're going to be in the Celtic weave. We're going to skip two stitches and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And we're going to do this all the way until we reach the stitches near the chain two corner. I'm going to skip two, front post treble in the next two, working in front of those two stitches. Now this is where it may get a little bit different for you. I'm going to, to front post treble in these two stitches and they are hidden behind these other stitches so you need to make sure that you're using the, the uh, tall man and your thumbkin here those nerve endings to find where these stitches are and there it is right there and in the next stitch and again I'm using these two fingers or my finger or my thumb to navigate where these stitches are. Let me go ahead and I'll do this again for you. Skip the next two stitches which are these two hidden stitches here 
and then front post treble in these two stitches that are on top. And then working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in these two hidden stitches. So make sure that you find those adequately. And do those two front post trebles. So go ahead and work that to the chain two corner. I am now nearing the corner, but let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to skip these two stitches and I'm going to bring in these next two double crochets and have them join the Celtic weave pattern. We're working front post trebles there and then working in front of those. I'm going to do the two hidden stitches that I skipped. Just like that. And then work double crochets in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and then our chain two corner, which is the two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. Now in order to make this side uh, symmetrical, I'm going to double crochet in the first three double crochets. And now I'm going to bring in these two double crochets as part of the Celtic weave by skipping the next two stitches. Front post treble in those next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches. Front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Just like that. And then continuing the skip two front post treble, the next two Celtic wave stitch. I'm going to continue that all the way until I get to the turning chain. So after coming to the near the end of this row, we're just going to work double crochets in those last two stitches and then two double crochets in the turning chain. Okay. So now we're ready to go to row 14 of this scarf. Let's go ahead and chain three and we're going to work our double crochets in the first two stitches and we're going to skip the next two. You can just double crochet in these if you wish but I'm going to just go ahead and pull these two stitches into the Celtic weave as such and working in front of those two stitches Go ahead and back post treble over those two stitches that we skipped. And just continue working, skip two, back post treble in the next two, and then working in front of those two stitches as seen from the front side and we work those two back post trebles in those two stitches that we skipped. So go ahead and work that all the way to where the, um, the corner of the project is and then I will show you what to do from there. I'm going to show this corner once again because I know this can be confusing. I'm going to skip these two stitches then I'm going to bring in these two double crochets to make them part of the Celtic weave now. And then working in front of those as seen from the, with the front side facing, I'm going to um, back post, treble crochet, just like that to make them a part. And then from this point, I'm going to double crochet the remaining double crochets is two. 
three, and then in that chain two space, I'm going to work two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets. Now in order to make this side symmetrical, I will work three double crochets. Now let me just restate again that going forward, when you do the additional repeats, that you may have more stitches here, you may have less, but you, you know you just want to keep this Celtic weave going or whatever stitch that you're working on here. So skip two, back post, treble, and the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, we're going to back post treble in those two stitches that we just skipped. And let's try that again since the strand got away from me. There we go. It's easy to do when you're working with the camera in front of you and trying to keep an eye on everything. There we go. All right, so back to normal. So now we just continued the Celtic weave with the skip two, back post treble, and then etc. So go ahead and I will meet you at the end of this row. I'll go ahead and work the end of this row with you. Skip two, and we're going to work back post trebles over those next two double crochets. And working in front of those as seen from the front side, we're going to back post treble in those Celtic weave stitches. And then we're going to double crochet in that last double crochet. And then two double crochets in that turning chain. Now before we complete this last stitch, it is time for us to return to our contrasting color, which is our color changing yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and secure this, and then we'll start the next rows. So now for rows 15 through 18, it's going to be a repeat of row number 3, which would be chain 3, double crochet in that first stitch, and in each stitch across, and of course, you know, once you get to the to the chain two, you're going to work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, and then one stitch in each stitch across on the other side, and then end with two double crochets in the turning chain and turn. Go ahead and work four rows like this. This would be again rows 15, 16, 17, and row 18. Okay, this is what I have after completing those next four rows of those double crochets. Now, from this point on, you know how to do the stitches to complete this. So what's going to happen at this point is we're going to repeat the arrow rows and then the rows with the double crochets and then the Celtic weave and then double crochets. And you can repeat this as often and as many times as you would like. So um, I'm just going to continue to do this until I literally run out of a particular yarn color, or at least until I have enough so that I can finish, because I want to finish with the um, Aqua Girl color here and with the um, the shell with the Pico trim. That's what I'm going to end this on eventually. And there's also going to be a perimeter round that, that goes along with that. But uh, so if you need stitch support and you want to go back to the arrow section, just be aware that the number of stitches that you end up with each time as you come to the corner here or the center of the shawl, that might vary a little bit. So you just need to be careful that each side mirrors the other. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you what I have. Okay, this is my shawl after working 46 rows of the pattern. Now remember, you can work any number of these rows that you prefer from smallest to largest. And I'll give you a better view of this at the end of the video. But I'm very happy with the way the colors are coming together. Now I am ready to work the 
picot shell ending and I'll show you how to do that right now. I've gone ahead and changed to my solid color yarn. I am working now with the front side facing and we're going to work our final row. I'm going to chain one, single crochet in that very first stitch. Now I'm going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and I'm going to work four double crochets. And then I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. I'm going to slip stitch in that first of the three chains to form a picot. And then I'm going to work four more double crochets. One, two, three, and four. And once I've done that, I'm going to skip two, one, two single crochet in that next space. I'm going to repeat that until I get to the chain two corner. Skip two. We're going to work four double crochets. And once we do that, we're going to chain three, one, two, three. Then we're going to work a slip stitch in that first of the three chains and then four more double crochets. Skip two and single crochet in that next space. And let's take a pause and show you what this is going to look like. So this is the way the shell pico edging will look across the bottom there. So I'm going to go ahead and work to the corner and then I'll show you what to do once you get to the chain two corner. Now after working this all the way to the chain two corner, I just have one stitch here to skip and go ahead and work a shell with the pico in that chain two corner. Now in the instance where you may have less or, or more stitches to the chain two corner, don't worry about it. If you have to skip an extra stitch or two, it's not going to be a problem. All right, so I'm going to just complete this shell with Pico in that chain two space. And just like we've been doing, um, since I only had to skip one stitch, here, I'm just going to skip one stitch on this other side and then work that single crochet to anchor that. And that looks fairly nice, I think. So now we're going to skip two and we're just going to continue working that pico, uh, or rather the shell, with the pico across the other side of the shawl. And then let's go ahead and finish this chain three, slip stitch in that first chain and then four double crochets. And then we skip two, one, two, and single crochet in that next stitch. I just wanted to show you what this looks like going around that corner. After having worked these shell with the picots all the way across, I'm going to skip the next two stitches. I'm going to work that last single crochet in that turning chain. And then I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to turn to work in this direction across the row ends. And I'm generally going to work two single crochets per row end. Okay, so now before I go all the way across with my single crochets, I am going to hide some of these strands and let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm just I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and leave the knots in and I'm going to thread these threads one at a time into my yarn needle. I'm going to do this on the back side and I am just going to carefully hide these within my work and I will show you how to do this carefully and with the wool this will probably blend in very well. 
and, and depending on the fibers that you use, it can vary how, you know, how this works. All right, so I'm just going to run that under several of the stitches like that, and I think that's going to be fine. And I'm going to clip it close, but not so close that it affects my stitches. And I'm going to run this one under the same color yarn, yarn stitches again. Going to the back side, I'm going to come up into the stitching here and around. And run it under these stitches here. Now, if you want to use the Russian knot or the surgeon's knot, um, you know, feel free. Of course, the Russian knot you would have had to have done already to join the yarns. And I am going to come out with a video soon explaining the differences of those. But um, e even after understanding the pros and the cons, I think I'm just going to stay old school as long as I'm doing a project with a lot of... Um, you know, a lot of crochet stitches, which does offer a, a lot more space to hide loose strands. I just feel a lot more comfortable having nice tight knots and hiding the, the threads. I know I can just trim the yarn right here, but I just, even if this knot is a special knot, I just don't trust it to stay there forever. So that's my defense on using knots in my work. So let me go ahead and finish hiding these knots and crocheting the single crochets and what I'm going to do is working two single crochets in each row and I'm going to crochet all the way across and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet that we started way over here with the Pico shells. So um, I'm going to go ahead and finish that and then I will show you what I have when I'm completely done. I hope you enjoyed seeing new ways to make the Abigail scarf or shawl with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you in the comment section. And if you're watching from the YouTube platform, please don't forget to subscribe and to hit like if you like this project. God bless. Bye-bye.